When you're just starting out in art, be it digital or traditional, you're likely to be exposed to more art and artists online and their methods and techniques. And so our art knowledge grows and often exceeds our skill level. This gap between knowledge and skill is a source of frustration to beginners and it is at this point that many people decide to quit art and trying to improve. This is the most crucial point and hurdle to cross as a beginner. For a more in-depth and better explanation of the knowledge versus skill graph, definitely check out this video from Love Life Drawing. Your first few drawings might suck and this will definitely frustrate you, but you will improve only by drawing more. The best way to learn is by doing and by increasing your art mileage. Iterative drawing is a good way to practice art and a good way to also increase your art mileage. Saikra has two videos on iterative drawing which are long but definitely worth watching. They completely changed my view on how to practice art. This drawing was inspired by this manga cover and I noticed that Nanami looked awfully similar to RM from BTS. As soon as this idea popped into my head, I had to draw it. This was the mood board slash reference board for this drawing. Don't be scared to use multiple references. In fact, use as many as you can. It'll make your life much easier. This piece took me close to 30 hours. I was so happy with how the sketch turned out that I was terrified to start coloring it and ruining it. Oh man, what? you're just ruining it. You're ru Look at my lips, you're ruining it. Ruin it. The part of this drawing I struggled with most was the eyes because this was the first time I was combining two different types of references. One was a realistic reference and the other was a comic or a manga style of reference. Because my references were completely different, it was a constant battle over which style to apply to which part of the drawing. I also really struggled with layers and I messed them up a lot, mixing up my sketch and color layers, drawing on the wrong layer and having to redo it or redraw, which was extremely time consuming and also frustrating. So the most important thing for me going forward is the clarity of layers. A separate layer for every new thing that you add will save you so much time and effort. I could cut down the 30 hours this drawing took me to 15 hours if I didn't mess up the layers and have to redraw half of the stuff again. Shading the hand was another thing I found difficult. Because every time I tried to shade it, the colors looked off to me and when I thought I got the colors down, it looked significantly darker than the rest of the drawing. I mostly felt this way because the hands were the first thing that I started to do shading on after doing the flat colors. I think the most important thing when you're working on something is to trust yourself and to trust the process. Your drawing will not look perfect every step of the way and sometimes it might look off but it will all come together in the end. And if it doesn't, you can always make adjustments. In the middle here, I try to experiment with different blending modes. But remember to keep in mind what blend mode you're painting in. At one point, I didn't realize that I was in a linear burn blend mode and not a normal. And I kept painting. So when I switched back to normal, it looked weird. One way to spot that you're in a different blending mode than normal is to check how the colors are. If the color in your palette is different to the one that shows up in your canvas, then you're on a different blending mode. Here the blend mode is set to linear burn, which turns a purple color to a dark orange on a yellow background.
when you switch back to the normal blending mode, the original color should be visible. For the rings, I remember seeing an Instagram post on how to color gold and I used a few references from Pinterest for both the gold and silver rings. I think I did pretty good for my first try at shading metals. And back to struggling with shading face edition. There's only one thing I want to say while well, y'all watch me fail at shading the face. Blending is super important. It can completely make or break your drawing. So make sure to use good brushes for blending. I couldn't move on to the rest of the drawing till I fixed what was bothering me the most, the eyes. So I tried different styles. I tried the comic style and then the realistic style from the reference. And I liked the realistic style for the eyes so I went with that and I was pretty happy with the result. And remember to include some reds and peaches when you're shading the skin for a more realistic look. And once I finished the part that I was struggling with the most, the rest of the process was much faster because I wasn't preoccupied with the eyes anymore. Moving on to the clothes. This was a pretty straightforward section for me since I was directly replicating the shading style from my reference and it became much easier once I found a brush I liked. A nice rectangular flat brush with some texture was perfect for this. These are the brushes I used. I really, really like how the tie turned out. I'm trying to recreate the colors in the tie from the reference without using the color picker was a challenge, but it was super rewarding when I got the colors down. The watch was also pretty straightforward but I had to redo the line art of the watch over the painting because I had messed up the layers. This was not fun and cost me a lot of time. Finally approaching the end, the hair. I think this was the easiest part for me to do and took me the least amount of time as well. The flat brush worked really well for the hair. And we're done. Remember that good things take time. This drawing was made over the course of months. And I'm glad I took my time with it because I learned a lot and I'm really proud of how it turned out.